I can tell you that you could make your heart work better in seven days. I can tell you that the end of seven days, if you go all in on your own personal change and transformation, that you'll produce chemicals in your body to look like you're in a completely different life. Can't call this pseudoscience any longer. I love when the scientists run the studies five times in a row. I love that. I love that they think of ways to do it differently because they really think they're going to get a different result. And they keep getting the same result and they're changing their belief right in that moment. They're changing it right in that moment. And they do the work. These are skeptics. They do the work because I asked them, why are you doing the work? And they said, it's medicine. I, saw, I, I did the scan. I know exactly what that does. And the more you assign meaning to the task, the greater outcome you get. And so we've measured gene expression. I can tell you that you can change your gene expression no problem in seven days. And the question that every scientist has when we show them our data is the same question. Are you telling me these changes took place a volcano, an explosion of factors in seven days? Are you telling me seven days? For seven days. In seven days, people could make their body, their biology, everything begin to change. And when you get collective people, collective people coming together with brain and heart coherence, watch out. Watch out, because if they direct that attention and that energy towards another human being, they will heal that person. I've seen it. I just came back from Nashville. This 15-year-old kid, 15 years old, lost his hearing in one ear. They put him in the cage. He, didn't, he forgot that he had, like, he wasn't even in there for that. <laughs> Turned his head. He said, I never cried so hard uh, that I ever remembered. 15 years old. He, he comes out of the coherent ceiling, he's totally hearing again. Some guy lost his voice years ago, couldn't speak. Instead of standing on a stage and speaking in front of people, he's not talking about that he could speak, he's talking about the amount of love that he felt from those collective networks of observers. And it is collective networks of observers that determine reality. And when we put random event generators in the room, sophisticated uh, uh, coin tosses, thousand times, thousand hertz a second, it's going one or zero, heads or tails. No one's in the room, it's a flat line. The moment we do these coherence healings, that, that line just drops, just goes right out of normal. Random events are becoming less random and more intentional. And all of a sudden, people are having profound changes. I want people, I want people to heal people. You know why? Because we have people that do this, these healings every day of their life. They do them every, and they're really good at it. We've measured them. I asked them, why do you do it every day? They don't do it, they don't do it to say I'm a healer, by the way. They do it because they love to listen to the mother of the child with autism who comes on at the end of three coherence healings and says, my son hasn't slept through the night since he was born. No medication, no drug, no therapies changed the fact that he's incontinent. He bangs his head, he's violent. And ever since those three coherence healings, he's sleeping through the night. He's using the toilet. He's hugging me again. They do that. They do that healing for, to, to experience what that mother is experiencing. That, that's causing them to be more whole. And when that happens, something innate in us switches on as human beings. It's really beautiful. Pro-social networks switch on and somehow we move closer together. We commune, we connect. And we're more appreciative of the moment and the feeling that that mother is feeling, the gratitude that she's feeling. There's no greater way to feel gratitude than when you receive it. And the people who are doing the healing that are receiving the gratitude from that mother, they're healing. And now they, all the things they thought they want, they no longer want. So how long does it go? Every new experience then creates another new opportunity for us to dream even a greater experience for ourselves and I think that's consciousness and it's never-ending process of self-discovery and every the cool part about it is you can't tell me you're too sick to do this work any longer you can't tell me that I've seen people with really serious health conditions <laughs> they showed up every day they never missed a day 
And there were days they had a lot of fear because the doctor told them they could die. And they could have not done their meditation, but guess what? They showed up anyway, and they overcame their fear a little bit more that day. There were days that they were, had so much self-doubt because their condition was getting worse. If they didn't show up for themselves, they wouldn't believe in possibility. They showed up, and they overcame their doubt and self-doubt a little bit more. There were days where they didn't feel good, where they felt sick, felt nauseous, they had no energy. They could have said, them, don't feel like it. And they did their meditation anyway. There were days where they could have said, I'm too busy, I got kids, I got a job, I don't have enough time. Guess what? They showed up anyway, and it's the overcoming process that is the becoming process. When they have that moment where they're finally freed from the chains of the past and the body is recalibrated back into the present moment, they look back at their past and they won't want to change one thing in their past because it brought them to that moment and they see their disease as their greatest teacher. They're no longer victimized by it. It helped them. They, they tell me, I would have never become this happy if I didn't have my condition. It woke me up. I'm a different person because of it. And so then that person stands on the stage that the evidence is right in their testimony. I'm looking at an audience when someone's telling that story there's a thousand people, two thousand people, everybody's leaning in. They're watching, they're listening to every single word that person is saying. They're holding on, that's hope. That's the truth right in front of them. That's somebody who broke through a level of consciousness or unconsciousness and they don't look vegan. <laughs> and they don't look buffed. And they don't look famous. You walk right by them. But I love when they put their hands out and they have no shakes. Parkinson's and she can swallow, she can chew her food, she can blink her eyes again. She got the upgrade. She didn't get it from inside the virtual reality experience. She got it with frequency and energy. A person tells that story and the, um, people are leaning in and listening. Somebody invariably in the audience is looking and going, if that person can do it, I can do it too. And just like an infection spreads amongst the community and creates disease, Health and wellness can become as infectious as disease and watch out and people become unlimited what they can do.